Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this very simple wine bottle sweater. And for our wine tote, we are going to be using some size 4 medium weight yarn. And I am working with the Lion Brand Yarns Re-Up Recycled Cotton and Polyester Blend Yarn, but you can use any size 4 yarn that you have. And the colors are Surf Spray and Rose Water. I'm also going to be using a size H or 8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. And you're also going to need a button. You can use any button that you have, but I will link to my DIY crochet button if you're interested in that in the description below. And you will need one stitch marker for this, but a safety pin works just as well as an actual stitch marker. We're going to begin with a magic circle. So take your tail and place it over your working yarn like this. Insert your crochet hook in your loop and pinch that intersection while you yarn over and pull up through. From here, we're going to chain one and then we're going to place 12 double crochets inside of that magic circle. And so when you're placing these double crochet stitches, it's important that you're working in the loop as well as over that tail. Once you have your 12 double crochets in your magic circle, then just pull on the tail to tighten the gap in it. From here, we're going to skip our tiny little chain one, and we're going to place two double crochets right here in our first double crochet stitch. So when we do this, we will be creating a spiral pattern which is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about starting and stopping your individual rows, which I just personally love. So once you have your first two double crochets in place, then go ahead and mark the first stitch. And from here, we're just going to place two double crochets in each stitch in our row, going all the way around and for a total of 24 double crochets. And at the end of your row, you can remove your stitch marker. And from here, we're going to place one double crochet in our first stitch and then two double crochets in our second stitch. And don't forget to mark the first stitch of your row. From here, we're just going to alternate between placing one and two double crochets going all the way around our row for a total of 36 double crochets. And at the end of your row, you can remove your stitch marker. And that was our last row of increasing. So the pattern from here is going to be to alternate between front and back post stitches. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to begin with a front post stitch in our next stitch. So basically for a front post stitch, you're just going to place a double crochet around the stem that forms your stitch rather than in the top. So front post stitches start from the front they go back around the back and then they come back out the front like this. From here, we're going to treat this like it's a double crochet stitch. So we're going to yarn over and pull up through the post and then yarn over and drop two loops at a time to complete our stitch. So that's our first front post stitch. To place a back post stitch is really similar. The only difference is we want to start from behind our project like this, come around the front, and then go back around behind. And I do recommend turning your work so you can actually see what you've captured to make sure you haven't accidentally grabbed an extra stitch or something. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through your post, and yarn over and drop two loops at a time. So since we're alternating, let's just go ahead and practice those one more time. So we're going to yarn over and insert our crochet hook from the front around the back and then back around to the front for that front post stitch. And then we're going to yarn over and insert our crochet hook from behind, capture that post in the front like that, and then yarn over, pull up through our post and yarn over and drop two loops at a time to complete our stitch. 
So you can see here that these front post stitches are creating a vertical ridge, whereas the back post stitches are creating a horizontal one. So go ahead and alternate between front and back post stitches going all the way around your row, and you might find it necessary to mark that first stitch, so it's entirely up to you and your skill level whether or not you want to mark that first stitch. When you get to the end of your row, your pattern should look something like this, and it should feel ridged. And for our next row, we are going to repeat like stitches, so we're going to place a front post stitch in each of our previous row's front post stitches, and we're going to place a back post stitch in each of our back post stitches from the previous row. And you should have ended with a back post stitch, so to place a front post stitch around a previous row's front post stitch, you want to make sure that you're capturing the post that forms your front post, not the double crochet below it or the top of the stitch. The process is the same, so you're just going to yarn over and insert your crochet hook from the front, and then yarn over and pull through the post and yarn over and drop your two loops at a time. For the back post stitch, we're going to yarn over and insert our crochet hook from behind, capturing the post, not our double crochet by accident, and then we're just going to complete our stitch like we would a double crochet. And we're going to repeat this pattern for our next four rows. And when you get to the end of your four rows, then your pattern should look something like this. So I ended on the last front post stitch of my row right here. So now what we're going to do is just place a slip stitch around our last back post stitch. So don't yarn over and then just insert your crochet hook around your post and yarn over and pull through all the loops on your crochet hook for that slip stitch. And from here, we want to preserve our loop. This will prevent us from having to cut and tie off our yarn for every color change. So what we're going to do is slide our stitch marker or safety pin in the loop that was around our crochet hook. And this will allow us to pull out the loop and work in it later, which is exactly what we want to be able to do. So now with your pink colored yarn, we're going to attach this to our crochet hook using a slip knot. So from here, we're going to start right here in that same back post stitch where we placed that slip stitch. So what we're going to do is I want you to hold on to your starting tail for your new color with your fingers like this. You just wanna make sure it can't slide through. Then you're going to yarn over and then working in that back post stitch where we just worked before, we're going to slide our crochet hook up underneath the post just like we've been doing all along. And we're going to yarn over and pull through our post and it might be a little tight because of that slip stitch. And I am still holding on to the starting tail for my pink color. From here, we're going to yarn over and drop those two loops and yarn over and drop our last two loops for a back post stitch to start. From here, I want you to make sure that your blue loop and working yarn are pushed to the back. If they're accidentally pushed to the front, then this pattern will not look correct when you go to switch colors. So just give those a nice little tug to the back, and I sometimes just hold on to that stitch marker to keep it back there. From here, we're going to continue on with our alternating pattern, so we're going to work in this next front post stitch with a front post. So this is going to be your pattern going all the way around your row, again just switching between front and back post stitches just like we were doing before, and we're going to be following like stitches. And when you get to the end of your row, we're going to dive right into our very first back post stitch with another back post stitch. So just like we did with our previous color, we're going to be following like stitches in a spiral pattern. And otherwise, we're just going to repeat this pattern until we have six rows with our pink colored yarn. 
And just like with our previous color, I ended my pink color on the last front post stitch of this row. So from here, we just need to place that slip stitch around this back post stitch, which is the last stitch of our row, just like we did before. From here, we're gonna go ahead and secure this loop. So now we want to insert our crochet hook in our previous colors loop. And you can set your stitch marker to the side. From here, we're going to chain seven. And depending on how tight your chain stitches were, you might need to add additional stitches or take some away, but you basically want this to take up the pink portion of your project. And from here, you're going to place a back post stitch around this back post stitch where you just placed your slip stitch. So that would be the last back post stitch of the row. And we want to make sure that we take our stitch marker and our working yarn and slide them to the back from our pink color like this. And we're just gonna continue with our like stitches just like we did before. So go ahead and follow this alternating pattern following like stitches going all the way around your row. And when you get to the end of this row, you're just going to continue to work with your like stitches, placing a back post stitch in that first stitch and then alternating with your spiral pattern. And we want to repeat this for our next five rows so that we have a total of six rows with our blue color. And when you get to the end of those six rows, just like we did before, we're going to place our slip stitch in that last back post stitch. And then we're going to trade out our stitch marker and crochet hook. And again, you're going to chain seven or whatever you did before. And from here, we are just going to repeat our last section, starting with that first back post stitch and then following like stitches with our pink colored yarn. So go ahead and repeat these six rows following like stitches and I will meet back up with you at the end of this section. And once you have your six rows with your pink color, we're going to go ahead and add that slip stitch in our back post, just like we did for all of our other color changes. And we're gonna go ahead and change colors and place our seven chains in our blue colored yarn. So the pattern for this section is going to be different than our other sections. We're going to begin with our seven chains up to our current row, just like we've been doing. And then what I want you to do is place your back post stitch in that stitch where you just placed your slip stitch, just like we've been doing with all of our other sections. So from here, we're going to go ahead and follow like stitches. So we're going to place a front post stitch in our next stitch and a back post stitch in the stitch after that. And we're going to repeat this going around our row. And when you get to the end of your row, rather than joining with your last back post stitch, just like we normally do, what I want you to do instead is chain two and turn your work. So when you turn your project over like this, you can see that your previous rows back post stitches are now front post stitches. And your previous rows front post stitches are now back post stitches. So it's important that we align our ridges just like we've been doing this entire time. So we're going to place a back post stitch in that very first stitch and we're just going to continue that alternating pattern. So now at the end of your row, your pattern should look something like this. So you can see that we kept all of our ridges aligned with each other, but we are creating this sort of crease here. And that's what we want. And the same thing that happened in our last row is happening in this row. So in our previous row, this was a front post stitch, but it is now a back post stitch from this angle. So in this next row, we're going to begin with a back post stitch. And so we're just going to continue that alternating pattern and allow our ridges to still be aligned while we go around our row. And we're just going to repeat that last row until we have our six rows with our blue color. And once you're done working your six rows, then your pattern should look something like this. 
So from here, we're just going to cut and tie off our yarn. And I'm going to hide these two tails down the inside of my wine sleeve. And then once you have your bottle in place, then you can kind of use that to see where you need to attach your button. And after inserting your wine bottle, your crochet wine sweater should look something like this. And let me know in the comments below if you decided to make this and who you're making it for. I love to hear about that. Thank you so much for working with me and I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day.